and welcome to another edition of Harvesting Greatness. I'm Fred Favors, your host, and it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. We look back at some of the baddest, inventive, and heroic African Americans of yesteryear. In the most difficult times imaginable, they would rise to be what God had commissioned them to be. And from the grave, their message to this generation. This week, Charles Richard Patterson, born 1833. He escaped slavery in 1861. Going through the Underground Railroad, traveling with Harriet Tubman and, and that tremendous operation that she set up, they would travel 500 miles to get to freedom through the Allegheny Mountains, West Virginia, and crossing the Ohio River to Greenfield, Ohio. Didn't have any money, barely anything on his back, barely any education. But one thing he did have was a skill. So he got a job at a carriage-making company, Dines and Simpson. And he was so good, after a short time, they made him foreman. But one of the things he did when he was there was get introduced to a, another carriage-maker who was Caucasian. And they would forge a friendship and a partnership for over 20 years. In fact, they would employ about 50 employees, white and black. Well, in 1910, Charles would get sick, and his son, who was going to school at Ohio State University, in fact, was the first African-American football player at Ohio State University, would come home to sustain the family business, but he not, didn't just get there and, and lie on his father's laurels. No, 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 no. He set his own mark. He foresaw what the, what the move was going from carriage-making And the new frontier was cars. So he may have had the first manufacturing plant in America. Not talked about very much. You know, he's a black man. You got Henry Ford out there. And of course, Ford was able to go to the banks and get financing. Of course he did. Now, the problem with this was that Frederick was not able to get financing from the banks. He was not able to get that type of open-door policy. So they expanded their businesses. Frederick could not. But he didn't just he didn't just die on the vine, folks. This is something that we need to understand. Our brothers and sisters, our heroes of the past who had no resources. All they had was a dream and a desire to be all that God had made them to be. So they, they, they did everything with their time possible to advance themselves and their families. And Frederick Patterson learned from his father. You see, his father had developed a, a, a mindset of quality. He had to have quality in everything he made. I remember a story my mother taught me. Um, actually, it was a lesson she taught me growing up, Mama Pearl, I was, uh, she had called me down to sweep the porch, and I didn't want to sweep the porch. The football game was on. So she called me, uh, Fred, come down and sweep the porch. I came down and swept it, ran back up to watch the football game. She said, come back downstairs, you didn't do it right. Came back downstairs, and I went back upstairs. She just said, I didn't do it right again, so I came back downstairs. I was so mad, the next time I came down, she's making me miss the big football game. And she pulled me to the side and gave me one of the greatest lessons I've ever had. She said, Fred, remember, whatever you do, do it with everything you've got. What was she trying to teach me? She was trying to teach me to have character and excellence in everything. But that was the thing that that, that, that helped C.R. Patterson, Charles Richard Patterson, and his son Frederick. There was quality behind everything that they made. In fact... The first car that Frederick made, the Greenfield Patterson car, they said had more quality and more class than Henry Ford's Model T. Now Frederick couldn't advertise, they couldn't advertise his um, car company and his cars uh, where Henry Ford and others could advertise their cars. He could only advertise his cars in black magazines and newspapers. So there was a little disadvantage that Frederick Patterson had expanding his car industry. But the smart thing he did, instead of challenging the big boys and their ability to go to the banks to, to, to promote and enlarge their corporations and companies, he decided to go a different direction 
and make school buses. It was an excellent idea. So we had contracts to make school buses with, with, with uh, school districts in Ohio, school districts in West Virginia, which is interesting because his daddy escaped slavery and had to go through West Virginia as a runaway slave. Now his son has contracts with major school districts in the same state that his father went through as a runaway slave. Amazing story. And also Kentucky school districts he was making buses for. So you may not hear the name Charles Richard Patterson or son Frederick Patterson. The United Negro College Fund was set up by Frederick Patterson. Yes, Frederick Patterson. So much was done. Actually, Warren G. Harding, who um, was president of this country, was helped and supported by, by Frederick Patterson. He was a Republican, member of the Republican Party in Greenfield, and was an annual delegate to the Ohio Republican uh, Party campaign. So this man was something special. His daddy was something special. What do they teach us? To believe in what we want. To have not have any barriers. Because, listen, we don't have as many obstacles that they had. Trust me. They had little education, little money, few resources, and a lot of hate. But they overcame all of them to become incredible human beings. That seed of greatness is in you and I. Next week, the Potato King. Yes, a black man had produced more potatoes than anyone else in the world. Not America, the world. Next week on Harvesting Greatness.